Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or find her in a Brock and Michelle. For Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or this episode, we're going to go with Steve and Marjorie Harvey. Now, y'all know Uncle Steve and Marjorie. They be going through their things. It was actually a story. Never mind. They love story. Steve and Marjorie Harvey just celebrated their 12 years, just celebrated 12 years of marriage by uh, proving their bond is just as strong as it ever was. Um, the couple recently posted photos wishing each other happy anniversary. Steve acknowledged his leading lady saying the ch- air quote, the chick of his dreams. Seriously, if Bay doesn't start uh, um, to stand for you this hard, is it really your bad child? I don't know. Um, Steve first saw Marjorie when she walked into the comedy club. He was performing that back in 1990. He proclaimed on stage, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to marry you. They dated briefly, reconnected again in 2005. Steve, who um, wed Marjorie then in June 2007. Was Steve Harvey married in 1990? I think so. Uh Uh-huh. I'm just saying facts. <laughs> Think like a man. No judging. Um, what what um, Iyan would say, no judge, no heat. No heat, no judgment. <laughs> no heat, no judgment. Just the facts. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's hard to get to the facts. And I think a fact was he was married. Let's see. And oh. He said that on stage. Yeah, he said that on stage. Or in the. You know, look, we sell all the truths, correct? Oh, yep. He was married to. Um, Marcia, nineteen. How many people he done been married to? Three. Wait a damn minute. Steve Harvey was married to Marcia, nineteen eighty through nineteen eighty four. I'm sorry, nineteen eighty through nineteen ninety four. Then married Mary Lee in nineteen ninety six through two thousand and five, and then in two thousand seven got married to Marjorie. What's his sign? He a Capricorn one. I don't know what that nigga is. Whatever he is. He What's a uh, January 17th? Is that a Cap? You know, Capricorns either don't be or they do be. They either real, real couple or they really not couple. This nigga is a... Uh, See what sign Sergio that is. Minus. So hold on. He been in a relationship since 1980. He only got two years difference between marriage. Mm-hmm. And then he said he met Marjorie when he was in love with his first wife. Yeah, I get a divorce. Let Nero be on the Black Love Matters. I don't weird left. I don't think this is what the end supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta say, just pull up zodiac sign. I think that's Capricorn, though. I think that's still stretch out the Capricorn. Um, that done threw me the hell off. And also, remember they was talking about Marjorie too. Mm-hmm. Here, Capricorn. I told you, Capricorns are very particular about who they're with. They have very very high standards, right? Where kind of no one can reach them, um, or they're like, it's not that. The standards aren't low, but they're like compromising, right? Like that when it comes to love, Capricorns are either like super, super compromising at the detriment of themselves or like I'm not moving. Mm-hmm. You come to me. This is what I need. Um, You can give it or you can't, right? Like usually they kind of depend on somewhere on that spectrum, but never in the middle because that'd be too healthy. But what I say, Marjorie be dating them um, gangsters, honey. I don't want to talk too much shit. I'm sorry. I don't mean it, Marjorie. <laughs> You know, she dated the um, ring league of the gang or the second in command and he got shot or she broke up with him and then got the person in the league. I said, what a Carl Weber novel is that? Didn't but, get Harvey. On a positive side, they do look fabulous. Marjorie Harvey serves. Mm-hmm. Okay. She serves fashion. They keep inviting her to these fashion weeks and stuff like I don't know. She serves looks to me. I follow her on Instagram just for outfit inspiration that one day I might be able to afford. But she gives a look, honey. Oh, okay. Um, never. I was gonna ask: Has anybody checked on Steve on a sick and shut in? Because you know they done gave him, told him to get off them shows, and they done gave it to Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> so I ain't know you niggas go that hard for Kelly Clarkson. They don't. That's the thing. I think it is. I've been hearing niggas talking about we like Kelly though. I'm like, y'all niggas listen to Kelly Clarkson like that? I mean, I ain't listened to her since a moment like this on American Idol. Like, I like her. She can give a little bop. I actually like her Christmas songs. So they didn't fire him from all his shows? Not Family Feud. Because that is his show. Mm. So actually Steve is going through a lot. Like, you know, I, you know, I don't find joy in talking about people when they are at um Ebes and Foes in their lives, right? Because, you know, child, when you go through Ebes and Foes, you just need nothing but good energy. But yeah, they doing him a little crooked, right? So like I said, Steve Harvey ain't an angel by no means, right? But the this sounds shady. Like how all of a sudden he's released from all these places and deals, right? And a lot of times in business, you kind of know a few years out when you're going to be getting canceled or what contracts is up for review. From my understanding, like shit was still rolling. 
and they decided to pull the clause. They'd be like, and I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm sure Uncle Steve got his coin, mm-hmm. right? Where they just give you a payout as a service pay. They'd be like, your services are no longer needed. And that is wrong. Um, but Steve gonna bounce back. I want, honestly, Uncle Steve, I want mine a quick comedy show. But I don't want no, I don't want no PG. I don't want no daytime television shit. <sighs> Well, you know, that's like, I almost wanted doing. to spin on that, right? I want you to. I want him almost to be like, "Ooh, look, the Lord works." I don't got to keep doing that PG thirteen shit. Y'all stop asking me those stupid ass questions. Like, I would love to see that from a Steve Harvey. What mm-hmm. you think? Yeah, I would love to see Steve Harvey do a quick, and not forever. Right? I know comedy's hard on your body, right, and on the road. But could we just do a quick, like six months tour, three to six month tour, Steve Harvey? You know, but the raw shit. I don't want none of this polished shit. You know who shit was raw? Who? That I didn't think it was going to be raw? Who? Uh, hanging with Mr. Cooper. I thought you were going to say Ellen. No. Because <laughs> Ellen got a show on, I mean, uh, a special on Netflix I want to watch. Yeah. You remember when we went to go see Hanging with Mr. Cooper? Yeah, Mark Curry is raw as fuck. That nigga was raw than a motherfucker. <laughs> he said he hated that Mr. Cooper shit. <laughs> 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 so I think, honestly, that might be a low key good move for you, Steve. Right? Get, just getting back to your people. Just let us love on you a little bit. Right? Because I know the black community, we go back and forth with you. You, you do be fucking up. I ain't gonna lie, you mm-hmm. know, we tell the truth. But we still love you. You ain't canceled. There's always room for redemption. That's what we're gonna call it the redemption tour. Come on through, Steve. Give us because y'all can y'all can talk as much shit as about you want with Steve. I forgot what that special he was when he said he was an African. He just started pissing on the monkeys. <laughs> Steve Harvey got some funny shit. You hear me? <laughs> so I wouldn't mind if you and Margie just do a whole little tour. Maybe um, seal it with a little Netflix special, HBO Showtime. I don't know who you got rights with. And then after that, that'd be about, what, a year to 18 months from, like, um, production to ending, right? And that by the time then, you'll get your next project. Mm-hmm. Right? Or well, shit, Steve in his 60s. Steve, it's okay to retire. <laughs> Write another book, shit. Enjoy your family. Right? That too. Like, it's not that you always got to keep working. Travel the fucking road. Steve got some coins. He do. But I would, before you retire, I would appreciate a quick sh- little bitty show. <laughs> Why you say it like that? Just a little bitty Just show. A little bitty you know show. when Contest Vine, she got that little Instagram where she lay squinting her hands together? Mm-hmm. Just a little show. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Nim. You got anything about Steve and Marjorie? No, we can move on right on. Oh, oh shit. Who's you? I'm Neil. And I'm Naomi. And this is episode 264, y'all. Hey. Be sure to leave a one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Five. On Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media. Bl- love matters. You are right. I'm on here. I didn't got tired tongue. What the hell is that? I don't know. Usually I'm the tired tongue one. I'm over here tired tongue like a motherfucker. I don't know. What the hell? You was, we done did this for almost three years. I know. Let me take a sip of water. Take a sip of water, honey. But a shout out Friday, niggas. Near on favorite day of the week, honey. It is my favorite day of the week. He loves it. So what's going on with you? Actually, believe it or not, y'all, I do not have much of an update at all. Like, I am easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Work has been a lot, um, but in a good way, right? Like, it's just long days. Like, it's so much. I'm so grateful to be in a space where I enjoy the company of my colleagues and they enjoy me, right, from all levels. I'm so grateful and thankful to be in a space where not only do I have my peers that I work with, but I have access to execs, like big name folks, like in the field where like, I don't know. And to actually be heard, right, and received, it's just been such a, I don't know, breath of fresh air as of now. Does that make sense, right? Because I've yeah. worked in, like, you know, I've worked at the bot store. and I mean, they listen, right? But it ain't going further than regional management, right? I worked in higher ed and talked to, like, deans and stuff like that, right? And even had time, like, presidents and provosts and stuff like that. But just the action, like, that's the difference in the game. Like, does that make, like, I just really mm-hmm. seen the difference in the levels in this game. And it's just... It was just interesting. Actually, I'll tell Niram about this. I'll tell you about the offline. We had like an event because, you know, it's Pride Month. Um, and we, so we had this whole thing. So all our big people was there. Child, they was walking around like that was Beyonce. And them. What? I was like, who is that? You know who that is? No, I don't. He's employee number three. You know, I be talking to other folks. They be like, which one you talk to? I be like, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how they be at your job. <laughs> yeah, you talking know. employee number three? Yeah, it's like that's how like tight knit it is, and it's like oh shit. Oh but it's just God. a moment where I'm like wow, right? Like it was just a sense of gratefulness. I'm tired, um, but uh, mentally tired, but not like, like physically tired, but not like mentally. Like I'm, it's shit I want to do, it's stuff I want to get going, and that was just super super recharging. And our team is growing, and my manager is the bomb, right? Because not only is our team growing, but we're like we're the one of the most diverse teams. Continue to grow 
Mm-hmm. Right? Like black and brown faces are appearing on our team. And it's just so relieving, right, to be in that space and do that. So I'm just grateful. Um, the other thing I would say, there's other stuff going on, but y'all keep me lifted. Sunday, I'm going to go get some word and I'll come report back on that. Also, um, Nia sent me this thing where, did you see that? When did I send it to you with Tommy Davidson? Mm-mm. Did y'all know Tommy Davis had a hard ass life? I mean, we black, so we all have a form uh, yeah, of a hard I'm life. Black people had hard ass life. No, it was this different. Um, so Tommy did a whole like preview. Um, no, he did like a whole interview mm. with the D.L. Hughley show, and I know like his mama threw him in the trash. His mama was like white. Jamal. Yeah, Lee Daniels done took the storyline. And Jesus. like the his white mama found him. He was raised by a white family. He was basically living in the back rural world woods. He didn't know he was black until the riots in the sixties. Um, like in the way he determined color since he lived on a farm was from animals, right? So you know, a brown and a white horse, like a, a, a two brown horses could have a white pony, mm-hmm. right? So he had thought he had thought that happened with humans. <laughs> so he was like, "Oh, my mama and daddy white, and they had a white baby and a brown baby." Just like the horses. I said, oh, my God. God damn. I said, fuck. Damn you, think you parents do a fucking number. I'm so do. On these children. <laughs> Black, all, everybody lined up for the trash awards. Right? And, like, it was just, I know. Thinking just white mamas and daddies had brown babies. Jesus. But God, he made it. He surely did. Did y'all know Tommy Days? I mean, that explains some things. It oh, does. oh, it's not. Okay, I'm it the does. only one. Okay. You with it? Okay. I'm the only one who think Tommy Davis just don't got a little. He got a little something. something. He got a cool people, part of culture, right? Legend. Yeah. Like, as a comedian legend. Not taking that away from him. But do he got a little. <laughs> what is that noise? Y'all know what like it is. Is that ticky ticky? He... <laughs> that, that you turn the wrong way. Is he that be the like. Gun cocking back. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Um. So that's good. Also, did y'all see Toni Morrison' uh, movie come out? I'm so excited about that. I think it's already out. I gotta see where it's playing. About time. We need to get these legends they flowers while they still alive. So like, I want to find a time to like look at her documentary and see all that type of stuff too. Mm. Yeah. So I'm super super excited about that. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. That's but, all my chicken. I don't got that much. That's all you got. <laughs> So thank you for all the thoughts and prayers of those of you who sent Mabel thoughts and prayers. She's back on the man. She is. She is feeling better since the last time that we have talked. Yeah. I don't know if we talked much about it, but you know. Because we was gone. Well, first, are you going to acknowledge the mental health day that you took? Yes. Please. What That we took. Yeah. Oh, okay. We can weed it. We can weed it. <laughs> because you as a beneficiary as, of it as well. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just need a mental health day. I don't yeah. know. I've just been tired. Yeah. Uh, it, it's you know it's coming up on my birthday, on my birthday, uh, on my birthday, and it's my Jesus it's year coming up next week. And so you know I just need a mental health day. I might take another one, yeah, but you know in okay addition to, to that, you know Mabel was sick. Child uh, beyond sick. Mabel was shitting and throwing up all goddamn everywhere. Yeah, and then we went to the damn vet and paid eight hundred dollars for them to give me. Some emodium. Some emodium and tums for dogs <laughs> and some dog and some dog food. Mabel was on the shook and shuck it. No, they told us she had pancreatitis and to prepare for the worst. I said What? I'm silly. What's the worst? <laughs> Death, nigga. I said, Oh, I gotta plant a fume. How are we gonna do it for the Black Love Matters community? Oh my god. Just have it live stream. Yes. <laughs> do you do a wake for a dog? Yeah. I- oh. Love bad baby. baby. Let's take a love bath, baby. <laughs> Let's take a love bath, baby. <laughs> Let's take a love bath. <laughs> so we had to play a love bath for it and everything. Yeah. And you weren't worried? Did you get a little nervous? Yeah, I did. When was your nervous point? When they started talking about x rays and oh. uh, this can be fatal for the dog. So yeah. we're going to make sure we can check this out. I said, oh, Jesus, Mabel, my second favorite dog. If she died, that's a wrap. Uh, yeah, Mabel died. I ain't getting no more dogs. <laughs> I'm talking about for this podcast. <laughs> oh, you just said the podcast. We just going to put cancel. We going to put a picture of Mabel face on there. I'm going to need at least month off, two months off for, uh, for bereavement. To, bere- <laughs> to bereave my dog. 
<laughs> I told the people who I work with, I said, I was just going to text y'all and I'm going to just need you to stop what you're doing. And I'm going to need everyone. Look, this is them. I like something called Hawaiian rolls. People are like, Hawaiian rolls? <laughs> I'm putting on the white kids, honey. Uh, uh, I said, uh, you know, when something happens, you got to take something to the bereaved. They was like, oh, that's a good idea. I said, mm-hmm. I done taught you. But now. And somebody, actually, someone passed away and they was like, I listened to you, Nyambi. I took a cake. And the family was so grateful. <laughs> so now Mabel's up on uh, Mabel's on the men now. She's almost I would say she's about almost back. She's still eating that special food, but Yeah, she gave I her can... special food, some anti nausea, anti diarrhea, and some booty spray. Right. What's the booty spray now? What was happening though? Is that too graphic for us to decide what was happening? So she was throwing up yes. and had diarrhea and she had just had nothing in her system. She was like Dry heaving. So it was like dry heaving. And just squeezing her booty so tight. It's Nyambi's fault because she gave her that whipped cream from McDonald's. I gave her McDonald's. some whipped cream from McDonald's. I gave her some plastic. And that, it ain't been the same. It almost remember that uh, that video, that YouTube video of that dude trying out all the fake food. <laughs> like, so if cheese ain't Don't it, melt, if it's real, plastic. Yeah, it's plastic or something well, like I that. I was thinking about that review on Amazon for them sugar-free gummy bears. Oh, my God. <laughs> Y'all go look on sugar free gummy bears on Amazon. And everybody was like, do not buy. Give explosive <laughs> diarrhea. Shit for four days. <laughs> like, it was just. I feel like somebody snuck Mabel some sugar free gummy bears. So she was shitting and throwing up all over the place. And Nero went to sleep. And I had to stay up and took her out. I took her outside literally every hour. She was at least a lady. <laughs> and look, she'll give us like three minutes notice. She'll give us like a one minute notice. I gotta go, nigga. Yeah, she'll give us one minute notice, and we literally run. One time, I ain't make. I just carried her to the bathtub. So actually, when we was uh, recording the podcast on Sunday, yeah, for Monday, she was like all in our face, faces, trying to yeah get our attention, like, get our attention, and like we just like planning off, like gone, man. We trying to record this podcast. As soon as we get done and open that door, yeah, she done ran out and shit it outside, <laughs> and that's when it began. Mm-hmm. And it ain't stopped. And he goes, she didn't shit it. She didn't shit it, Nero. Who? Mabel, Mabel. At the front door. I said, Mabel, don't use the house, use the bathroom in the house. Well, she did yeah. now. And that's when we should have known. Mm-hmm. It could all be so simple. And then from there, from that point, Sunday night at what, 9, 10 p.m.? Mm-hmm. I literally, because Nero went to bed, I literally took her out every hour and a half. It was, no, I'm, y'all, I was 2.30 in the morning walking around outside with this dog. Did you bring a knife or something? Like, no, I was so sleepy. I don't know what I was thinking. I just didn't want her to shit in my house. <laughs> I just didn't want her to shit or, or throw up in my house. I could not handle it. <laughs> so now, yeah, I wake up and like, you know, we had bought these dog pads from Mabel a long time when ago. When we first got her. When we first got her because we know she was house trained. Yeah. I wake up and there's like these dog pads all over the bedroom floor. <laughs> like, what the hell? She ain't going to sit in this room. What? And I'm like, Nyambi. <laughs> And then she got them like all around her bed, like it's just circled all around her bed. And I said, Naomi, Mabel's not going to. And then get I had out like the bed. a whole path, like the other door. <laughs> I said, Naomi, Mabel's not just going to get out the bed, uh, <laughs> shit next to the bed, and get back in the bed. That's not how dogs work. Where do you think she was going to shit at? Probably closest to the door. Oh my god! So I had the whole, like the whole house was lined <laughs> in um, bought dog pads. And so that was going on, Mabel. So she thank you for all the prayers. The people may send the prayers up. Mm-hmm. You should have took a picture while she was at Dottie. Y'all, she was pitiful. She was. I thought she wouldn't make it. Her hair fur was losing luster. I had to get some um, coconut oil rub on her a little bit. Oh, my God. She getting the luster back, though. couple other things. I hope y'all niggas are watching the debates, even though Ooh, there's a lot debates. going on. I'm going to have to really go back and watch both of them. And then Monday, I think I'm going to have to have a conversation about it. The thing is, there's too many of them up there. Mm-hmm. Like It's like 10 and 12. Yeah. So, for one, it shouldn't be that many people up there. It should be like five or six at max. So, I Honestly, think the good thing. debate, two people, but five or six max. Yeah. So, I think, like, for some of the people, like, you don't even hear them really talk because. Honestly, if I was them, I'd play it under the radar and let people murder themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the debates are going on, and the way I was looking at the schedule, they're pretty much going to be at least two debates uh, every month until. The election. Yeah. I mean. It makes sense. Is anyone come out the Republican Party? And is is there one person going against Donald Trump, or is there an independent that's more conservative? I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, Republicans going against Donald Trump. Yeah, or independents, right? Sometimes independents can sway more conservative or moderate. That um, I think a lot of times the Republican Party aligns a little bit closer with you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still early. Maybe they waiting to see. 
right? They lend the Democrats. They're trying to figure, because that's the other thing. You have to weigh not only Donald Trump, but how strong the Democratic Party is. Mm-hmm. And if it's too, is how's Joe Biden doing? From what I see, he was up there getting it. Was he? Yeah, he was getting it. You know, because the uh, debates are actually going on right now. Um, who who's out for fucking blood? Who? Kamala, Kamala Harris. I mean, this is uh, oh, she just child Mabel sneezed. And I thought she shit it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got nervous. Well, Kamala Harris, this is her um, formal training, mm-hmm. right? Like this is what she's a prosecutor. She's up. Her job is to hit you for filth with the facts and make you look stupid and incompetent. Yeah. yeah. So f- from what I see, uh, Mayor Pete, Kamala. Uh, Sanders and Biden are kicking ass, okay. and the rest of them are just sitting there, like trophy wives. The thing is, the trophy I know people are nervous, and it takes a lot to get on national television and like well, well, cable television and do. I think it's on CNN, but some of the hesitancy <laughs> in some basic ass answers as far as immigration reform, gun laws, right? Isn't it? Just, I went to the point where like high level topics gonna come up. Mm-hmm. And even the way sometimes they were answering them, like I think they almost got Bernie Sanders tongue twice though. They asked him about like his stance on guns because I think I forgot Bernie's was a little bit more conservative or, or the conservative was no. I can't even use conservative to die, the, define Bernie Sanders, but more moderate. Yeah, right. He still was for the band of them, right? But he just gave more space. And he was kind of stumbling a little bit. He was like, that's a character assassination. She was like, nigga, that's your quote. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, he could have just been like, I changed my, my, my views have evolved. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, why is that? Is the president not uh, had the ability for the views to evolve? No. Right. I, left. But I think it would be good if we talk about a nonpartisan or bipartisan like president. Right. Mm-hmm. To say I can evolve. I can take in different viewpoints. And make reassessments and change my stance. Right? Like, what's wrong with that? Right? And he was like, I ain't say that, bitch. Keep my name out your mouth, my doll. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, the tension. <laughs> but you can. T- <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you ain't feel it. Yeah. I, I couldn't host it. I might relax. I could. I, I was looking at it while I was working. Some people was like, you need to give the commentary. It would be brilliant. I forgot. They were talking about, it might have been immigration reform. And I forgot who was going back. It might have been Pato. I Damn. forgot the the white guy. Some white guy called him out. Mm. I forgot the other guy. He called him the fuck out and was like, I ain't going to do this. But Pato or Beto, mm, I don't think he's going to win this one. I can't even get this name. Um, like He was like, he's still for the Constitution, the duh, 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 title sits, and he is basically a bitch nigga. And Beto was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked like Elizabeth Warren was going to say something. I said, stay out of it, Lizzie. Let the boys play. Let, let them both play. I'm just waiting for somebody to yell and need a heal. <laughs> so is Biden. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> well, he's going to give the famous white lie. I'm not going to keep apologizing. That's white people, fa- that's liberal white people favorite line. I'm not going to keep apologizing for the same, same mistake. Can you forgive me? I'm no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. How many people kill me with that? How many times do I have to apologize? Nigga, till you die. Anyway, this is still my update. Uh, a couple other big shout outs. Meek Mill is now uh, a co owner of Lids. Did you know that? I don't really keep up with Meek Mill. I know, but yeah, I think that's a big move, though. That's Susan? like, yeah, Lids is like the number one hat apparel in the world. Is it the only? Number one. Oh, okay. Good for Meek. You know, Meek, I have mixed re- feelings of him. Mm hmm. And uh, Serena Williams is the becomes the second black woman uh, tennis player to be on the Wheaties box. Who's First the, of all, oh, never mind. I didn't even know they still sure sell right Wheaties. Now. Who eats Wheaties? I thought you just get Wheaties box at the Olympics. I didn't even know they still sell Nigga, Wheaties. What does a Wheatie taste like? Cardboard and like a diet? Like what uh-huh. is it? Oppression? <laughs> what I'll, is Wheaties? I don't know. Althea Gibson. What's the first black one? Yeah, I know Althea Gibson's. What is Wheaties made? That's a never mind. That's the wheat. But <laughs> never mind. Wheat. Never mind. But yeah, never I mind. didn't know niggas still sell Wheaties. I didn't know first of still all, eat Wheaties. You know, it's a whole segment of the population who's super healthy and like eat Twix and salmon and berries and. Twix, I think you're saying Twix, Twix like, like the Twix. candy bar. Oh, no, not... Twix. No, that's just your fat ass. Um, <laughs> Twix, like off a tree. 
you shady. Uh, off the tree, honey. Like mm-hmm. just twigs and twigs. What's it called? What's it called? The things that just run in the dust in the um, wild west. Tumbleweed? Yeah. Oh. Tumbleweeds and twigs You're and salmon. Right. Mabel better not bark. <laughs> Mabel, get in here. There's another dog out there. She's losing her shit. Uh, uh, uh. Mm-hmm. So we got a black love story. Do you want to say that for Wednesday? Next week? Yeah, you today shout Wednesday? out Friday. Okay. Ooh, who the black love? Okay, yeah, let's say that for Wednesday. Black love day or Monday. All right, so let's do a little bit of pedal top before we uh, do some shout out Friday. Okay. All right, do you want to jump into BET Awards or you want to finish up the uh, 21 Daily Practices? Let's finish up the 21 Daily Practices, and then do BT Awards and do shout out Friday. All right. Perfect. So well, we own Nero. I feel like Nero is dragging this out. Like we are not doing this service. We're like, what? oh Jesus. <laughs> we need to be more engaged. The thing is, is, what are we now? Like, can you remind us what the fuck we're doing? The thing like, is, I'm, so I'm just I'm tired what? because of Mabel. What? I, y'all, I literally didn't get sleep. I don't know how y'all do it with children. Like, I am tired as hell. Well, actually, I do. Like, I I, I completely understand why parents pay people. Because <laughs> this is too much. This not- is a full time job. No, y'all be. Should we put Mabel in daycare? Yeah, I'm thinking. I think Mabel just need to go to daycare. So, 21 daily actions are. Am I wrong for that, y'all? Is anybody who listens put their dog in daycare? Because I mm. think that's where I'm headed to. Because just during the day, it's too much. I also need a daycare for the weekend when I want to be left the fuck alone. Shouldn't have got a dog, huh? What day when I want to be with her? Saturday night. Is that strange, though? No, I don't how know. How do y'all parents do it? No, my question is how do you parents do it? especially if you have the means you know it'd be some parents who like don't go out they literally go out like every three months so you niggas tell me okay this is okay y'all gonna hate me they gonna read me for filth so y'all niggas really tell me all y'all niggas do is go to work eat come home and play with those little fuckers <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you do with man that's why i had the realization is that what that is with kids that's life hell no nah. and the thing is at least we leave with mabel <laughs> On the weekend, we'd be like seven, six hours and counting. I feel like we set an alarm. Maybe we can be going for six hours without no notice to her. Mm-hmm. Or no have to like take her off for a walk or take nothing. But you know, with children, you know, they got to be what? Well, what's acceptable to leave kids alone? 12? Alone? Yeah. 12? At what age? Now? That's what I'm saying. Is it 12? Mm-hmm. Or 13? I, I have, feel like I was home alone that. Like I had my first house key at first grade. What Was that seven? Yes. What the fuck? Your mom grew up in a different time. <laughs> so I don't know how parents do it. It went from like tired. kindergarten to like, well, you you in first grade now. Not first grade. Do you know how to write your name? Here's your house key. And what you do? Did you, they like pin it to you? No. How you ain't losing? She gave me one of those, what would Jesus do, lanyards. And then, what was your routine week? Tell Walk me through this. What was your routine when you came home in first grade? Because I'm trying to see if it correlates to what Mabel does. <laughs> so I got home. Yeah. It was usually late because I was on safety patrol. At one. I'm sorry. Not at one. In first grade, you yes. were on safety patrol. How could you cross the street at first? Mm, you were not on safety patrol. I was. I think you had to be like fourth or fifth grade. Okay. I what was the fuck safe. was DPS doing? I don't know. Uh-huh. So got home, called my mama job. Okay. And how I go with the job? No, Niram, do not spare a detail. <laughs> bring, bring. <laughs> Hey, this is the big three plant. Hey, can I speak to Nero's mama? Hold on a second. Stop the line. Uh, Nero's mama. Uh, uh, Hold on, let me put you on hold. They stopped the whole line? Yeah. Oh, my God. I guess that's true. Nero's mama, your son on the phone, he says important. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Get up before and sometimes... Phone. some. This is before like cell phones got popping. So okay. sometimes she'll like come and talk to me, or sometimes she'll just be like I'm tell them to call her back. Yeah. Well, like, did they come back and ask you like, "Is you all right?" Yeah, they, like shit like that. What they say to you, there? Or it's like tell my mama I, I made it home. Uh huh. And, they and they'll just like literally just yell it over the line. Over the PA yeah. system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. And so I got home. When she got on the phone, day she would get on the phone. What would she say to you? You made it home. Yeah, house school. It was all right. Well, I need you to wash dishes or do whatever. Yeah, wash clothes or do whatever. You was lying. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. You I know what? Our parents are going to be in town next week. You might do a <laughs> podcast with all of them. You going to invite your mom on there? No. I don't know if she could <laughs> hide no, her identity. Because she has no coof. <laughs> 
And she'll put all our identities <laughs> out there. <laughs> Address, where we at, where we work, hopes, dreams, right. fears. I don't know if I got enough time to be editing that podcast. <laughs> editing names out and shit. Her own name. You're right. <laughs> okay, so all right. So you call your mama to plant. Now what you do? Hang up now what? Um, then from there, uh, I have to call Miss Katie. Who is Miss Katie? And Miss Katie was the lady next door who used to uh, so called watch me to make sure I ain't leave the house or whatever, whatever or have people in. Okay, how'd I go? Bling, bling. Hello? Now you done made it home. <laughs> Your mama left you some food there. What'd you say? What'd you say? Yeah. Uh huh. If not, I got a TV dinner over here you oh can have. Oh my God. I, I know you like them Sasbury steak. Oh my God. Was at least Marie Callender? No. It was on bonnet. Ban- it, was, it was the banquets. Oh my God. That cost a dollar. Yeah. Oh you got any homework? Never had homework. Uh, no. You a lie. <laughs> no, sir. I never had homework. Uh-huh. No. Oh, okay. Well, call me if you need anything. Mm-hmm. And then she'll call maybe a couple hours later. What see what I'm to. What? what you doing over there? You ain't got no girls over there, do you? At first grade? Yes. Nigga, you ain't want no girls at first grade. <laughs> These niggas. Uh huh. And so after you done talked to Miss Her Name K, mm-hmm. then what you go do? Uh, warm up my banquet TV dinner. Oh, you had your mom ain't cook you collard greens. Sometimes she did, sometimes she didn't. Okay, so what was the meals you would have? Your Some, banquet dinner? Yeah, like a banquet dinner and like a fago. Okay. And then I watch uh, Dragon Ball Z mm-hmm. or Power Rangers or what was that TV? Home Improvement. Oh, Home Improvement was lit. Um, and then I play some video games. Yeah. And then do some chores mm-hmm. and then play some more video games. Uh huh. And okay. then like sneak out the back out back of the house to do what? Go play basketball at the um, on another block. Why don't you just ask Miss K to go? Because she's gonna say no. She, yeah. Uh huh. She's like, Yo, Mama wants you in this house. So okay. sneak out the house. And then go play um, basketball. What time you come home? Maybe about seven, eight. And then do, do you ever wash your ass? Can I finish? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> then by then, Miss Miss K call back. Uh huh. What happened if you miss a call? I know you have. Uh, I just say so asleep. Say I was asleep or something like that. Well, you lie. Uh huh. <laughs> and then I get in the shower, and then like. I know my mama used to get home or get off work at 11.30 and get home about midnight. So I'll just play video games until about 11-ish. Uh-huh. And then I'll just try to go sleep or act like I'm asleep when she come in. Uh-huh. I'll like turn off the TV but leave the video game on. Thank you, Nero. You're welcome. The life and story times of Nero. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you. You're welcome, baby. All right, let's get into this article. 21 days, of the, uh, 21 daily practices to prove your uh, relationship. So this is uh, using science of mindfulness and CBT to strengthen your, your bond. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's broken up into uh, three segments. So think, 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 act, and be. You act. Is you, are you asking the question? No. You tell us? Think, act, and be. Uh-huh. So we're on the the B aspect of it, okay. and B is mindfulness practices. Uh, practices invites us to be uh, fully in our lives, just as they are. While we often think of meditation, uh, when we think of mindfulness, we can practice presence and open uh, to reality, no matter what the situation we're in. Uh, not at least, uh, not at least of all during um, our interactions with our significant other. Yeah. So the first one is practice gratitude. So place a pen and paper by your bed, mm. and just before you go to bed tonight, write down three things that you uh, appreciate or you're grateful for. I do about your partner. I do think that's something nice, and I know like even it's something about the written word though, or mm-hmm. even the text message for the tech folks, right? I think it's something about actually writing and leave those little love notes around. Like I think that's the modern day love letter mm-hmm. that you know. I don't. It's really pretty old school. To, for, it's very rare to find people who write actual love letters, but it's something about like a quick post it note that I do think is special. All like the little post it notes or writing things that Niram or anybody I care about has written me, I still hold on to. Mm-hmm. So I do think that's important. On um, the next one is meditate on love, loving kindness. So sit comfortably in a quiet place. Take three slow, calming breaths, uh, and bring to your mind your loved one and mentally send them uh, wishes. That's so, good shit, yeah, right? so you know, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you find ease in your life, mm-hmm. may you be free of suffering. Yeah, so this is something I, I do not just to you, but 
just in general. People, when I when I when I um when I'm awake and I can't go to sleep, like I'll just be like, ah, all right, I'm grateful for these things, and then like I'm, and then I'll be like, I am mentally sending positive energy to Sir Jeffrey or like whoever, yeah. whoever, right, mm-hmm. and just go from there. That's nice. I need yeah. to start doing that. When I just be up in the middle of the night, I just be up. Mm-hmm. I just talk to Nia. And he's like, yeah, I wake up in the middle of the night. I just clean the house. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I literally go eat a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no damn food in the house. We can't have ass rating in the middle of the damn night with I Mabel. Do. Like, when I get bored, Mabel be, and now Mabel done got the shit, right? So she ain't getting nothing of that. <laughs> she get her doggy treats. The, it was so bad that, you know, some of my folks at work have dogs. Um, we also bought a new dog food for Mabel. By the time she got sick, I done gave my friends, uh, I mean, my folks I work with, I have a y'all can have these treats. You got them beef sticks from Trader Joe's. I'm like, I don't know if Mabel can eat them. Mm-mm-mm. Make her sick, honey. Uh, and the next one is listen with presence. Pay a, uh, close attention to your significant other when they're talking, um, when you're talking with them today. So focus mm-hmm. intensely on what they're saying. Um, what they're saying, their eyes and their body language and their facial expressions. Yeah. It's a rare gift to give someone your full attention when mm-hmm. talking to them. Yeah. Especially in this day and age. Child, when you're t- connected to the phone always. Right. Yeah. Uh, see your loved one. The best parts of our lives often fade into the background and become invisible unless uh, you're, they're taking, uh, taken from us. Practicing your partner today mm-hmm. as it's their first time, like you never lay eyes on them. Oh, no. Let's try it. What? Let's see. see. When was the time you really looked at me? Y'all, y'all don't know. I just went outside to take my Mabel out, and I went outside with my hair looking like Seely. Why didn't you tell me now? Because <laughs> you was gone at too fast. At least it's a ponytail, so it ain't horrible when you come closer. Because I meant that. <laughs> like, when far back, it's like, I was about like, to oh, say, I hope you didn't go to work like that. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Did you? No, I don't think so. Oh, I would hope shit. my folks told me. <laughs> they I wouldn't know. There's at least three people that, that's on task to tell me these things. And if not, we're not friends. I'm literally going into the room like I'm not your friend anymore. You know, there there is one person at the uh, at my job. I said you're tasked to see if I got lotion on my knees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. that's now, how I know you're my true, friend. Everybody ain't gonna do it right, but it's like two or three people I got at my job where we gonna pull each other to the side to be like, "Is you okay?" As I would do to them, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. not in an um, embarrassing way, but like I got you, right? So nah. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. I'm like, you ain't my friend because you ain't tell me that uh, my my crazy. knees are ashy as hell. Because sometimes, like, you know, it's fucking early as hell. So I'm trying to get in the shower. So I'm be funky going to this damn job. Yeah, so you just be dry. So I just be dry as hell. Yeah. And they got lotion there. I'm like, you got to tell me. So I got oil on my desk where I just oil my whole body down when I get to work. <laughs> All right, number 19, uh, breathe and give thanks. Sit comfortably in a, a quiet place. Bring your awareness to your breath as it moves in on your body. Mm-hmm. With each breath, uh, bring to mind one thing about your partner that you're grateful for mm-hmm. and things they've done for you and times you shared together and their yeah. best qualities. Mm-hmm. Um, number 20, see the, good in the, see the good in the hard times. The next time you experience conflict with your partner, see it. If I uh, see it as they're pointing out something positive, mm-hmm. often a partner's strength and limitations have the same underlying cause. That's true. So, for example, if you feel like they worry too much about your children, perf- perhaps it reflects the consistent care they show to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. Or if you're concerned about the money, uh, concerned about money they want to spend in homes, uh, are there positive ways that they're spending to improve your lifestyle? Yeah. And it's twenty one. Practice presence with at your meals. So just before you about to start eating, um, with your partner, pause to feel your feet on the ground as your wet uh, as your ass press against the chair. It don't say it's no. your ass. Oh, near, near miss. You know, got to add a, a little, little something, something. Little black love, not a yeah. flavor to it. Breathing slowly as you uh, take the moment to look at uh, look at your partner and share a meal. Carefully notice the food in front of you, uh, taking in the colors, textures, and aromas. That's true. I honestly, you know, I think we used to be so much better at that. Like mm-hmm. mealtime was really a special time for all meals. Like any meal we eat together, we would be super present. But I've noticed this lately, we've gotten a little bit distant from that, mm-hmm. which is interesting. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we need so to we need be to bring more that present. back. Right, because we used to eat at the table. Like now, and like, it's not wrong with eating on the couch every now and then, but I feel like that's almost become a default. But we used to, like even on the weekend, like we would literally sit at the kitchen table and look at each other. Mm-hmm. Like, they have a deck. So oh. that's a CBD, a CBT deck. Um, and it's just 
practicing like mindfulness thoughts and things that's right yeah we might have to get that and see like some like we're at, it's we're actually overdue for an episode where we kind of just do like a what's it called where you just answer questions yeah icebreakers and things yeah we overdue for one of those those are super fun yeah i actually seen this new icebreaker deck i want to get mm-hmm. uh, i came up with my facebook ads i think it's pretty cool yeah it's um what's the name of it this one actually i seen too it's by a black woman and so it's like icebreaker deck and it says meaningful conversations and deeper relationships. Every conversation is an invitation uh, to risk uh, revealing yourself. Yeah. And this one's what to have like deep, deeper questions. Yeah. So for example, they got one that's like when the last time you cried and why? Oof. Or it's like, you know, instead of how are you, you know, try who is something, someone you admire, you yeah. know, what do you do? Try what, did, what was your first job? And tell us more about that or, uh, what is something interesting about you, uh, about where you grew up at? Yeah. So, like, those types of questions were to help build meaningful like, relationships. Deeper relationships. I mean, yeah. that's when we did, what was it, the 36 questions that lead to love? Yeah. It was something very similar to that, too. Yeah. I'm for it. So, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's get into the BT Awards. BET Awards. Mm-hmm. Do you want to start? What you want to do now? <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> Shout. Look. I took notes. Because <laughs> now he was taking notes. This out of order. Y'all ready? Uh-huh. So Regina um, Hall, I think she, her name is Regina. It ain't King. No. Miss Hall. Hall, I think she did good. She what did. Think? I loved how, it, first of all, it was very black. Mm-hmm. I appreciated, like, her not being over the top, right? Like, I think some of the, like, hosts that do it are like straight up and she's i would consider her a comedic actress but i would just consider her an actress and entertainer too like mm-hmm. she can do all genres um and also i don't think she ever did like stand up either um so i feel like she had funny moments but it wasn't so curated that it was like mm. you know you remember a time where saturday night live and i know it was a skit place but they was just trying so hard that you're like yeah not funny right like i just like how she did the mixture of just natural conversation funny moments right like and also tying like black shit into there like when she was talking about gentrification and unmute dc and like connecting to like i just appreciate i also appreciate how she just kept the show going Mm -hmm. right because sometimes like when the kevin hart is on there like because they're comedians by trade right and they want their little stand-up monologue and it's like come on nigga like i want to see see mjb right i'm not trying to see the other stuff right but shout out to Regina Hall. Like yeah. she's just doing her thing and not aging and just looking fabulous and playing movies. I even like the spot space where what did Taraji win or was it Regina King? Regina King. And like she was kind of looking like And she said Tell that bitch to come to present the award. Tell I ain't with Regina come, who? Tell that bitch to come back down from Bill Street or street, something. The Bill Street to get the award. <laughs> she ain't even here. <laughs> Like that felt a lot more natural, right? And maybe because mm. she is an actress, right? So she could give more of that energy. But I'm for it. I'm for being her. I, I want more Regina Hall, mm-hmm. basically. She's funny. Yeah, she's very. I, I'm and she always was talented. Right? I don't know why we slept on her, but let's just give more and more to her too, and just see um, where it looks like. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about Little Nas and Billy Ray? Yeah. Billy Ray, you niggas to say what you want. He's a fucking country music legend. That nigga came on here and didn't miss a beat. Can he we talk about how good. Billy Ray is more accepted in the black community than Miley Cyrus? So trying to, Miley Cyrus has Billy been trying to Cyrus, twerk up in here for the longest. Um, What's it called? Achy Breaky, his heart on down. What was his song? Was it Achy Breaky Heart? I don't know. What's Billy Ray say. Cyrus song he known for? He Achy Breaky, his heart. Um, Don't tell my heart. My Achy Breaky heart. Like, what is Billy is he known for? Anyway, he's a country music le- legend. He um, eased on down the road and came to the BET Roar Awards and dared you niggas to say, say something. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, on the ranch, when P- Beyonce even thought about performing at the Country Music Awards. And when we think about Beyonce, not only, of course, she's a black woman, right? Mm-hmm. And a black entertainer, but she is like a pop icon. The Country Music Awards was like, it's just not what it is anymore. <laughs> I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Beyonce, it ain't like I sent who, who, who. It ain't like we sent City Girls to the Country Music Awards. <laughs> Period. P- <laughs> If that was the fact, I'm like, yeah, they right. That ain't country. <laughs> that was a miss. Even though that would have been inter- entertaining. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I could have went with the country folks and be like, yeah, that was a miss. City girls ain't what I was looking for. Period. Period. Tip. What a T. <laughs> it's some of the bitches who started that. Yeah. What was Billy Ray Cyrus' song? Is it Aggie Break Your Heart? I don't know. I'm still if you just go to it. his number one song, 
Why is New York taking so long? Because I can't find it. Just scroll to the oh, bottom. Yeah, hey, you break your heart. heart. Don't tell my heart. My achy. Like, I know that. That bang. <laughs> something, something. Just the don't understand. Of and they be doing that line dance. They be fucking it up. But to all that being said, I don't care what y'all say. And Billy Ray Cyrus is up there in age. When I tell you he sounds fucking good, he sounds fucking good. He sound better than Little Nas. He still, I know he a baby. This is his first live performance. His voice was trembling because he was scared. But don't y'all fucking sleep on Billy Ray Cyrus. What's that Dominican blowout Billy's rocking? I don't know where he's rocking. What? It's like, like that mystery. He reminds me of like, it's a Dominican blowout mixed with The Undertaker. <laughs> what? Do y'all know the wrestler? Like what? <laughs> when I seen him, I was confused. What you uh, What you thought about Billy Ray Nas and Little Nas? You know? I thought it was... Uh... Do Nas do country music or this this song was country? No, it was country esque. Oh, so is, his genre isn't country. No, he's more of alternative. Because gotcha. he came out with an EP and he had like some rock songs on there. Gotcha. And some other stuff. So he's more of like uh, an all over type of artist. Because right? when I seen the pictures, you know, the internet is undefeated. Uh, when I seen the pictures of the baby, you know, they say he keep they keep overarching on over anchoring on this idea of him dropping out. Who cares, right? Mm-hmm. Plenty of niggas drop out. Um, but he looked. Never mind, I almost said something. Nia, shout out to the honey molasses. <laughs> um, sugar. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. That's what it reminded me of. Did you know what I'm talking about? Have yes. you seen it? I don't need to see it to know what y'all talking about. Because <laughs> I've heard Nia say it to me. And, and what you talk about that you used to see. Yeah. That's who that reminds mm-hmm. <laughs> And Nia, is you still listen to us? <laughs> 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 you know, some of our friends don't even listen to the podcast no more. No, they don't listen to us. And then they, they be like, our shit. And then like, y- y- y'all still do, do the, the podcast? podcast? Oh, yeah. Man, you don't do it. What? Look, they be confused. Oh. Niggas listen to y'all. And, and then like, yeah. Yeah. And say, oh, well, I need to get back on it. I say, you're not a real friend. <laughs> you need to at least listen to two episodes <laughs> a week. I ain't say two a week. I said once a month. <laughs> I said, y'all can't listen. You're that busy. You can't listen to once a month. First of all, you're a cubicle warrior. You don't have nothing but time. Right. Are you filling out the cell phone? So you saying you just listen to yourself, <laughs> your thoughts? <laughs> Jesus, what did we? What did the cubicle warriors do before headphones radio. and music? Oh yeah, radio will play in the office. That's true. The radio. Could you imagine? Ooh <laughs> shit. <laughs> anyway, okay, back to this. I'm all out of order, y'all. Can we talk about MJB? Let's say that for the last, bro. You oh, went all the way. You okay. went. Tyler Perry? Yes. We Can Perry. we talk about Tyler Perry's speech? Okay, I'm split. I loved it, but I hated it too. Like, I love the idea of just, he, Tyler Perry gives a word. Tyler Perry is churched. Every time he come on that stage, the spirit of the Lord comes through him. He has been church. He is, he is able at any moment. Like, whenever he leaves, I want him to be like, made a, made a, um, May we add a blessing to the reading and hearing his word. Mm-hmm. Like that's just every time he walks on the stage and off the stage, that's what I want to hear. So I love this idea of picking ourselves up, right? And putting black people in business in the fact that like um, the land was owned by slave, um, whatever, like white people, Confederate folks that owned our people. Now it was one nigga that owned all of this, right? I mm-hmm. love that, right? But there's something that was in the back of my head that also said like, it was a little pull yourself by your bootstrap Mm. that I don't think everyone has that same access though. Right. And I'm not saying like, I don't want to defeat or play down anything that Tyler Perry says. Right. But there is a privilege that he has by being a billionaire and having all this. And I understand he lived in the car. I understand. Hey, right. But the game is set up that, Everybody, somebody gonna lose. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I don't know. Like it's just something about like I was so inspired, but then my heart hurt a little bit to be like, but it don't work like that for everybody, mm-hmm. right? White supremacy, um, like systematic systematic oppression, does play into this, right? And I think sometimes we don't acknowledge that and we don't call that a thing. And that does need to be a thing, right? And I think in addition to us working hard, getting our own stuff and doing what we got to do, we are responsible also for breaking down these walls of systematic oppression and racism and fighting through that. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes that's missed in the message. No? Yeah. Um, again, I could be stretching. I could be really woke. Y'all know I'm going to read in a bald one. Um, but it's something about that systematic oppression piece that 
when sometimes folks who get really successful don't do you know what i'm saying yeah. uh, but i battle with it right because i think everyone is meant to do everything you do right it resonated with me to say your dream um has many parts and people's lives are dependent on your dream right and like plans unfolding and god's like work like i believe in all of that right but i do believe that it is something to this systematic oppression too it is something to that all of us can't win we'll let three of y'all win <laughs> right but when you think of three compared to millions right like it's mm-hmm. just <sighs> well that, that's the system right everybody's not set up to win yeah i think that's what hurts a little bit but no i i thought it was inspirational though like i think tyler always gives a word though but it was just something in the back of my head that, and it wasn't even in the moment, right? I think mm-hmm. after I reflected on it and I watched it a couple of times and I was like, yeah, but it's some other stuff going on too, right? And mm, I don't know. Y'all know, let me know if I'm overreaching on that one. what do you think about that? What do you think now? I'm um, like, you know, that's an interesting take. You know, I personally didn't think any of that stuff when he was up there. What you think? Did you think it was a word? He gives a word. He, it was definitely a word. But you know what? Even with everybody's faves, there's always some sense of like problematic, right? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even, yeah. like, he's not problematic. Like, it was just, the st- I might have been triggered. Mm. That might just been a triggering statement to me. You know, and I'm all about him uh, mm-hmm. paying, paying people their worth and uh, hiring black folks and things of that sort. But, you know, he has his problematic ways, too. <laughs> don't we all, though? Don't we all? Right. And that's what I'm saying. I don't want to deflect. Everything he said was right. Everything about getting your own, helping your own, and the idea of helping people cry, all of that's right. Right? Mm. And that's the thing. Black folks, we have to do so much. Maybe everybody got to stay in their lane. Maybe mm. that is not his calling to do the front end type stuff. Yeah. Right? Like, so yeah, I'm processing. Y'all know I give y'all the raw high I feel in that moment. No? Mm. Um, Nipsey? Ooh, I got a lot. Y'all, I'm just in my wokeness. Okay. What Y'all you let me know if it's too woke. The Nip- Nipsey tribute was cute. Um, Mother Nipsey. Y'all leave Mother Nipsey alone. Everybody don't subscribe to the way that y'all believe like earth and afterlife is. Let that woman be. She she believe in a grand architect and Mother Earth. And let her, first of all, she's grieving. Let's be very fucking clear. She lost her son, what, less than three months ago? Mm-hmm. So let's be very fucking clear she's grieving. And second of all, everybody does not have the same spiritual beliefs and practices. And y'all know I love the Lord. Don't, don't you let this message get confused. Well, Nyambi loves the Lord, but Nyambi also respects other spiritual practices. And y'all need to slow down on her. They, they, they act like she went up there and said, I don't know, like just something foolish, right? Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, her cadence. <laughs> I think I was more worried about her cadence than what she was saying. No, like, I don't, <laughs> her cadence. I was like, wait a minute, Mama Nip. Her daddy. I mean, Nip Daddy had a real nigga moment. <laughs> Nip Daddy. I thought he was a little ass, Indian man because she was trying to squeeze his lip. He said, "Don't touch me. It's my time." She's like, "Back, you do you, motherfucker." Did she ain't say motherfucker? <laughs> but that's it what he, like that's he was the energy. Say, it is my time. This is my time, and I'm gonna do how I'm gonna. I do let it. you worship the tulips. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this, right? So, but I'm getting on y'all. Y'all leave Mama Nip alone. She can, she can, and not just her. Like, it's a lot of folks that worship and move through this earth differently that are brown, right? If we go back to our roots, especially in Africa, the islands and stuff, like folks, did, like people have different beliefs and rituals, right? So don't leave her alone. But can I say one thing? Yes, what you got? I appreciate Nipsey Hussle and his, um, the things he's done for hip hop, the things he's done for his community, especially the black community, especially in Compton, right? Mm-hmm. In Compton. But what I will say this, I think Crenshaw. B- Crenshaw. Um, I think BET sent a really big message by having this tribute to him. And there's nothing wrong with him having this tribute, but this is where I got triggered at. It is Pride Month, right? And mm-hmm. BET did no acknowledgement of the black LBGTQ community at all. Nothing. Right. There was no celebration. There was no shout out. There was no awareness. Meanwhile, trans women of color, black, actually not women of color. Let's take the color of color shit out of it. Trans black women are the highest population of folks who are being murdered right now. Right. I think just that week before I forgot the woman's name was murdered. Mm-hmm. Right. So even if we're not going to celebrate it, we're not going to bring any awareness. Low hanging fruit. No reps to pose. 
in that whole cast in the groundbreaking that it's been doing in the community. And I say that in line with Nipsey, right? Because Nipsey has done a lot of things, right? But Nipsey has also been very vocal and said some real sketchy shit about the LBGDT community, mm-hmm. right? And to have him highlighted in this moment, I know RIP, right? But that speaks, right? Because a lot of folks died this year too, mm-hmm. right? It, and everyone didn't get that moment, right? But giving that moment... And also not allow, like, I'm not saying it shouldn't happen or it couldn't happen. I say it can, right? But at that same moment, not being mindful enough to allow space for the LBGTQ black community, I do find a problem with that. And as an advocate and an ally, I got to say something. That is some bullshit. And no one was just cognizant enough to say, let's look around who's missing at the table. They ain't invite the girls from Paul's there. Like, and maybe they did and they didn't, they didn't come. Nah, right. But I don't think. They didn't. Oh, you said, no, the niggas didn't. <laughs> they didn't. BT did it. Right. And I don't want to get on your BT because y'all done had horrible shows. At least for the last five or six years, it's been trash. Um, So this was a good one, but I, I hold feet to the fire. Right. Like, I, it was glaring that there was no shout out to the LGBTQ community in the fucking mist of pride. That's a fucking problem, right? Like, that is just a fucking problem. Um, and I did not like that. And like I said, I run the Nipsey, Nipsey thing because that shows who do you highlight, who do you take moments for, right? And who do you not take moments for? Mm-hmm. And that, that says something, right? Yeah. Am I reaching there? I don't know. No. You know, I, it, it is something to say, like, you know, where was all the black people at a rainbow family there? Yeah. Period. I didn't see any representation or any, like, I didn't. I just didn't see it, nor did I feel it, mm. and that's a problem. Especially when Pose is killing it, and they on it, and no, they got my, renewed for a third. I'm season. saying Pose is a lob. Like yes. that's not trying. No, that is, that Pose is, is a lob because they already the shit. They are, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's a lob to just have them present an award. <laughs> like I didn't even see that. Right. And yeah. I, it is a problem. Hell, even just a little Vogue section. V- v- Vogue. Come. Where the fuck was Billy Porter at? Was he booked? I don't know. I can imagine. <laughs> like, BT, I need us to get on this, right? Even as we're thinking of the folks that we're honoring at the BET honors, um, at these different ceremonies, have we honored our LBGTQ f- folks like we should have? Right, um, Marsha, please Google um, her last name. Um, that was the first person to throw um, the rock when it came to Stonewall, right? Like, has a monument, right, that's being built and, uh, like, released this week, I think. Like, it was just so many events and times that we could have just... Uh, just honored that community. Mm-hmm. And I think we let them down again. Yeah, we did. And I'm sorry. On behalf of the Blacks. <laughs> um, Do we go... Are you, Yeah, can you look up the first person? It's Marsha. I forgot Marsha's um, last name. It's a trans black woman. Um, I'm losing the frame. Marsha P. Johnson. There mm-hmm. we go. Um, Marsha P. Johnson, right? Like, just legendary shit. And the work that has been done. Another lot. Uh, and I'm going back to celebrating folks, right? Even if we give folks who are alive. Like, first of all, Marsha P. Johnson should receive some, some type of honorary award from BT. Mm-hmm. Let's just, boom. Like, BT honors. There should be something for folks who have passed on and didn't get their followers. Absolutely, right? right. But I'm even thinking about, like, everyone ever we're thinking about show business, so it's black entertainment. Has RuPaul gotten the flowers? RuPaul been doing this shit since, what, the 80s? Are you fucking serious? As long as I've been Are you ever fucking, when alive? the shit was not, are you serious? Like, shit like that. Like, that's bullshit, BT. All right, let me move on. It was a good show, though, right? I'm just giving critique. Can we talk about Slim and Queen? Yeah. Or Queen and Slim. God, Lena does good shit. I was telling her, you know, be still, right? Because, you know, she got a lot of shit going on, right? And I shout out to her having a black director and everything with that. But who was the get out man in that black woman? I think mm-hmm. she a black Brit. The black Brits. Hold on. Hold on. Wait the a black minute. Brits it's taking, in a lot of. I don't like how they uh, mimicking they taking, our accents. They taking all the black American jobs. Okay, Donald Trump. They are. <laughs> If we gonna Down do anything, is the black Donald Trump. What if we gonna doing? do anything about immigration, need to be these black no Brits. Brits. Can't take no more black TV. No, <laughs> no more all black Taking all these shows. black actors, uh, <laughs> black American actors jobs. What you say? They can come over. They can't work in Hollywood no more. <laughs> that dude from Snowfall got Franklin. A, Franklin ass got a real ass. Um, 
European accent, like his ass drinking tea and crumpets. And then he, co- it almost feel like they teasing us. And then got the nerve to have a Southern California with a Southern twang accent on Snowfall. It had a, I, do you feel like they teasing us? Yes. <laughs> it's like it's like the black uh, the black European actors are like caricatures of, of the black people of the black people in the Man, U.S. Is this just us, y'all? Of course, I want everybody to get their money. Get their money. I love. Y'all. I, I feel, support nah, all fuck, y'all. Fuck, I, I feel some type of way. Oh, you feel a certain type yes. of way? Yes, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, Nero, I'm serious. Yes, I'm playing. You, Nero, don't be Donald Trump. They ain't taking money away. <laughs> Do you think it is? Any black actors out there? Y'all let us know the tea. <laughs> oh put this or is it the other way so could black actors in america go over to like europe and get some of the black why no. it ain't no roles the europe said we're not interested in this. that's why they ask coming over here and plus what <laughs> black what uh black american you know uh can do what, a british accent. can do a british Nigga, accent we can barely speak english exactly but meanwhile these niggas come out here with a full-on british accent Sound like near the nyambis <laughs> the fuck that's true how they learn that I don't know. Watching us? It's frustrating. Everybody want to be us. But don't want to be us. But don't want to be us. Shout out to Paul Mooney. Everybody want to be a nigga till it's time to be a, a nigga. nigga. Mm. <laughs> but Slim and Queen, I am interested, Lisa. <laughs> I'm going to go see it. The Queen is Slim. It's, I guess it's when they flipping on the head the idea. Because also I thought it was like, you know, black men dying porn. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so sick of that kind of. Like, I don't, I think I need a, ha- I, like, I need a pet's life here. I need a black comedy. Can we slow down with the dramas? Cause I know Harry. No, I need a straight up black. Is Steve Harvey? What you think like a man three? <laughs> <laughs> I know I said it was trash, but <laughs> come on. I don't want no dramas. Is that horrible? Mm-mm. What's the last black com? Maybe we need to go see Shaft. Last black rom com I seen was a uh, little. Yeah, I think I need more. I think I need more of that. Like it's just too much trauma. I'm sh- okay with thing like a man three. <laughs> what about you? Sure. <laughs> Will Packer put it. Will Packer it do something. Is it time for Girl Scouts? I'm sorry. Girls trip too. Let's do it. Niggas trip. I don't care. <laughs> Niggas trip. <laughs> I'm about to watch one of these BET movies. <laughs> now, now you wishing Ty- for a cold I'll, black. It's Tyler Perry coming out of retirement. <laughs> that quick. Look. Is Medea free? <laughs> Can we do a boo three? <laughs> Um, what else is going on? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Because can we talk about burning mama? <laughs> As we're on the shade from the blacks, this is our intergroup um, conflict. We need to have an episode and just talk about intergroup intra. I'm sorry, intra group conflict in the black communities. Have we had that round table yet? No, we haven't. We got because we got friends from the continent. We got friends from the islands. We got friends from South, like um, the Latin spirit. We got niggas too. Um, I'm sorry, silver blacks, right? We need to have another round table. Did we ever talk about that? No, we didn't. We should do that. Um, but can we say how Burner Mama, who um, I guess he is from Nigeria, of course. Y'all Nigerians. I be loving y'all. Y'all get on my fucking nerves in the same sentence. You know, sometimes I be with Nigerians. I be like, I think y'all my niggas. I think I am Nigerian. I am of the people. Mm. Then they say some shit where I'm like this. <laughs> nah, would get be the thinking, fuck out of here. Like, what? <laughs> nah, I would be thinking she Ebo and shit. I mean, I'm Ebo. We be vibing. We be good, right? And you old silly cow and goat, whatever y'all be talking about. I don't know. And <laughs> Y'all know what the Ebos be talking about. And then they'll do some shit that I'm like, wait a fucking minute. Right. Now I'm be eating the fish with the head on. I'm eating the there. fish with the eggs. I'm eating my jalof. I'm eating my plant, not my plantains, my yams, my fufu. I'm doing all of this, right? Then they say some problematic shit. So what is, <laughs> Burner got the word. I guess Burner was in the bathroom. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we'll step on his behalf. Honey. And his mama said, hold on. We done came too far. And I don't know what she said, but she ended. But don't forget, we all from Africa. Y'all know what my response is? And sis? <laughs> and, yeah. And? We f- we ain't forget. I think y'all forgot. Who ain't f- who who forget they from Africa? They forgot to send the Uber promo. They forgot to send the, uh, the Carnival Cruise back for us. I don't know. What do you... We ain't asked to be... <laughs> I feel like niggas, civil rights niggas always say it. We gotta say it to the whites. We gotta say it right. to y'all too. We ain't asked to be here. We ain't asked to be here. We only been here for a few generations. Is it space for us? Right. Huh? Chief Daddy? Y'all remember? Did y'all watch Chief Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> did y'all watch Chief Daddy on Netflix? Chief Daddy. Please watch Chief Daddy. I'm stupid. Was I wrong to feel a certain type of way? Like when she said that, I would have been like, and sis? You know, you always feel some type of way. 
half of when when uh, when Africans be telling you what, they be what telling you be me doing. where I need to go and where I'm from. <laughs> and I'm no, like, where the fuck I'm from, <laughs> nigga? I'm from Detroit. <laughs> Which, listen here. And the thing is, I'm all about conversation and dialogue, right? Because we in the diaspora. We all in this together. We all black. We all love the continent. We all of I do believe that, right? I want y'all to get very clear. But when she says shit like that, like, who the fuck said we wasn't? That's a good question. Who, no. What? Yeah. I want to be questioned. Because you can even tell at the end. Like, I feel like when she left off the stage, everybody was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong award show. <laughs> Next. Cardi B. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about Cardi B? Um, and Offset, they did that. Can we talk about rappers dancing? <laughs> offset. Offset said, I don't want to be no rapper no more. I want to be an entertainer. Well, you know, that nigga's always been like break dancing and shit. And when he was dancing off beat, I said, good job. He wasn't off beat. <laughs> yes, he was. That nigga was on beat with the rest of the dancers. They was off beat too. No, Naomi, you just off beat. No, near him. Pull up the shit. They were off me. I I am versed when it comes to the school of Michael Jackson and Beyonce. And there is no gap. There is no two second delay. I think you off beat in your head. Nope. Offset. I mean, it was still cute. Offset and his crew was off beat. But I enjoyed it. Is that the thing? Is that but dot dot dot? Mm-hmm. BET where I loved it, but dot dot dot. That's the name of the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, his crew was off beat. Or they was missing a mark. Like some people was hitting a mark and other people were like three seconds del- delayed. And because the cameras are zoomed in and, and 4K, you've seen every beat that was missed. But what I can say, I so much appreciated this a- a performance that he actually did something. Right? He had mm-hmm. a stage presence, right? Because I love Amigos and all the rap folks. But they came out there just, uh, you know, when they just get out there, what the fuck? Like, I turn on my Spotify. I don't want to see that, right? But having the theme, and because it's a little ditty bop, he was doing like the Jackson Five robot when they all put their hands on each other mm-hmm. and they, you know, they doing dancing, dancing. Yeah. Boom, boom. That's all I could hear was Michael Jackson in the background when he was doing it. So I was here for it, but they was a little offbeat. Um, Cardi B once singing, but I know she healing. The thing is, I couldn't even, I didn't even miss the fact that she wasn't singing live, and that's how I know it's something good when she didn't even miss. I didn't miss the fact that she wasn't singing live, right? Or also she made the attempt to know, maybe I'm not at peak performance, so let me not fuck up. These niggas not Them off niggas beat. off beat. Wait, let me look at them. They off beat, Nero. Wait till they get in that line. Look at, they off beat. Oh, something? Yeah, oh, they is off beat. Some of them niggas. They not in sync. They ain't in formation. Well. Look, now look at Beyonce formation. You see if one Naomi, bitch head off. Everybody can't be precise like y'all, AKA. Um, Michael y'all Jackson then. Chris Brown. Let's see if any of Usher. Let's see if any of them not hitting it. Right? Like, it's like they all doing the same thing, uh-huh. but they a couple seconds off. And it's even more disappointing to see backup dancers when your job is to dance. <laughs> but it's good. I'm liking it. You ain't liking it? Yeah, I like that. You know, it was... I, I was... <laughs> Ooh, near me. <laughs> no, I think it was good just to see the nigga do something other than just, like, have just rapper stand hands. stand on the stage. You know, because... I feel like the only person that really does like standing on the stage Jay-Z. doing rapping hands is Jay Z. Yeah, because he has so much other and production value. I agree. He got Jay Z got lights. And he got film. strobe lights and background and, and drums and like everything else, right? else. Right? Where other niggas just have um, what is it, dry ice? Mm-hmm. Even on Amigos, they did have like that water in the background. And it was like, uh, and then it'll show uh, and the water and shit. I didn't see that. Or it's like pure water. Honestly, and I was like, what the hell Migos is that? When Amigos and the mustard came on, I was totally uninterested in that. I said, so all the hits y'all have had this year, you decided to play this song that I've never heard. Mm-hmm. Bad move, right? Or if you're going to play it, you should have did the last couple minutes of it. Even Cardi brushed in her stuff a little late because she did like the press play. Like she, mm-hmm. she still played shit we knew. I shout out to Carly and the shit that she's doing. Um, can we talk about the baby? Yeah. And why he got white babies. I'm disappointed. So I have nothing else to say until he gets some black ones up there. <laughs> white so I babies. checked out. As soon as he's dressing like Superman with white babies, <laughs> trash. I didn't even listen to it. As soon as I seen them white kids, I was done. I can't with you. What? So y'all tell him to do the redo the performance and found some either. It ain't got to be black babies. At least somebody with, they can be little Indian babies. They can be Asian, but I don't care. But I need them not to be white with blue eyes. No, because then it would be black babies. Y'all been like, he coning and shit. With black babies? Yes. No, I don't even know the purpose of having those children on there. Because his name is the baby. 
So you don't see the water in the background. Neem is trying to prove a point. It's still bad. Um, what about Lizzo? With the rapper hands. What about Lizzo? What about uh, LMA with this bright uh, safety green? What on? about LMA talking about I don't put in work? Since I don't think anybody was coming for you. <laughs> Who, who's LMA beefed out with? Her. <laughs> <laughs> No, they got <laughs> no invitation and not a one nomination. <laughs> just, just, you know, it's that idea of the who hollering at the moon, mm-hmm. like the moon or the wolf. The, right. the moon don't holler at the wolf. Let the like LMA and I. Uh, what she saying? I deserve this. Right. And the, the people have spoken. <laughs> what they say? Pure water. Um. What else going on? Can we talk about? Let's uh, go back to Lizzo because okay. I didn't want to check that out. But yeah, Lizzo, she's the baddest bitch. I didn't watch it. Why not? I don't know my attention span. You know who I didn't watch secretly, y'all? Who? Lizzo and her. Her the first 20 seconds I went to sleep. What you mean? When she was uh, on the uh, stand-up? When she was on the Was it Cello? Cello. Yeah, and she, you know, I think it's the spoken word. You know, but she didn't do it with her cell phone, though. She did it from her head. I know. She memorized it. I know. Y'all, I'm not the biggest fan of her. She's bigger than just Rusper. Can y'all suggest a song I should listen to that don't include whispering or songs that don't have to turn up to highest volume to hear her? I don't like songs that when I have headphones, I have to lean in. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> what you? I don't. I don't. Honestly, because I wasn't even that impressed with Fantasia. I, mm-hmm. um, not her vocals. And that's the thing with her. Like, she can sing. It's just the songs don't be landing to me. But also, like, BT audio was all fucked up. BT, MTV, what was the VH1? I hear all nobody. of them. Because the when they closed at all. the end, with, what's his name? Before I let go? Not mm-hmm. Frankly Barely Made. It was Johnny Gill. And you yeah. know he a loud motherfucker. I could barely hear him. Right. I can't turn my mic up. What is wrong with the audio quality? Oh, maybe it's that why. So every time I listen to her, it's on a television. And yes. she, I can't hear her. Because you don't listen to her music. Yeah, so y'all recommend a good her song for me that doesn't require me to lean in. And the thing is, I don't, I'll be clear, it's not that I don't think her voice isn't beautiful. Of course mm-hmm. she can sing, but her songs just don't land for me. Fantasia's new song don't land for me either. And she can sing, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, Fantasia sometimes be so, I'm like, girl, just sing. Like, does that make, so like, just mm-hmm. sing. Like, I thought even her outfits be looking uncomfortable. And don't get me wrong, Fantasia got body yaddy, but it's just the, put together like it look uncomfortable mm-hmm. right and i'm like you look uncomfortable right that the way it's buttoned up and like the hair is spiky the outfit is spiky the heels are spiky it just looks you don't like her because of the mystique what do you mean I, i'm not a fan of her wearing sunglasses <laughs> that's part of her brand though i mean but being a well maybe she don't because you know the children don't like genres the children don't like boxes you know at all right when it comes to race or music so, um, I would consider her more of a soul R and B singer, right? Mm-hmm. And I, usually those songs hit and bang because of the connection, the personal connection you make. And it's some, not something. It's so impersonal for me to have a conversation or look at someone and they have glasses on. Well, that just, glasses. I'm real old school. No sunglasses. Like when I can't see your eyes, that bothers me. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's my own personal shit I'm working through. But mm, I guess. Who else is there to talk about there? Who else you got? MJB. M. Let's finish J. it up with MJB. B. She did that. She Mary got B hits flat on too. hits on hits. Mary B flat. Mary B always been flat. Mary though. B flat. What was it? Have y'all to get your freaking life? It is a series on. Got to be real. Yes, YouTube called "Got to Be Real" by Patty LaHill. <laughs> Cubicle Warriors. Yeah. Once you finish this. Go on YouTube and look up Got To Be Real. Is it Is it the two? Just see if you go to YouTube and if it comes. I just want to make sure we give them the right thing. Yeah, it's Got To Be Real. Go to YouTube and type in Got To Be Real. Is I think the lady's name, Patty LaHill. I just want to make it sure is. if she haven't changed her name. It's a whole series of divas. Uh, I'm trying to get the whole summary for you, right? And it's like this diva series. And what she does is voiceovers for them. So it's like Mariah Carey. Um, so it's got to the like the number two be the letter B in real, and it's I brilliant. Like I think I'm gonna go back that. and watch it too. Can we do a little bit of a, a preview? 
So it's everyone from Beyonce to Aretha Franklin to Fantasia, Mariah Carey, Christina Aguilera, Whitney Houston from The Grave, right? And they shading each other. Mm-hmm. Like they'll go up and sing. They be like, oh yeah, Beyonce cute, but honey, I don't know what her tight tongue ass be talking about. And then they be like, <laughs> talk about Fantasia. They go, yeah, she can sing, honey, but she can't. Like she'll be like, yeah, I've been trying to study my words and I've been learning how to. <laughs> <laughs> and they did one on Mary, and it's like, we love MJB, but Mary be yeah, so be flat, flat, honey. Woo, she be flat she as be the, flat. the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Not flat as the earth is just flat just right here on the ground is where mary's voice is at <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just so funny y'all so i'm playing a little bit right because mary um you know mary is a legend and mary mm-hmm. can blow right but y'all know what i'm talking about y'all know when mary get into a song right i think that's the beauty of mary j Blige. she's so raw right she's giving you like down home this is how we're feeling oh. everybody this is it y'all How'd your ass get past the gate? Psych, this is my show. I want you to come in and I'll show you around and all that good stuff. This come is on. The voice over. This is the intro. Oh, 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 We're gonna find out from our favorite clip this weekend. Damn, the blue water right here. It's like the cribs set up. When they come to Payne Hill House. Guess who's coming to dinner? And it's called Guess Who Come to Dinner. I'm having a dinner for my divas here at my house. Some people are invited. <laughs> That's what I'm about to do. That's and some are. Okay. Some are. She said what? Some are. Miss Patty, I'm super early, but I wanted you to know that my sister's Tony in the Braxton. car. My sisters get on my damn nerves. I can't stand those bitches. They don't listen to me. <laughs> I tell them they're not invited. And they're detective. not important. But if you have four more invitations laid around, that'd be cool. She if you don't have them. I don't. Why? Oh, is we going inside or what? Or what? Patty said no, Tracy. <laughs> you sure? Tracy, she just kicked Tony out to keep us from coming inside. I don't believe it. That's Tracy. This is bullshit. I told y'all we won't get in. That come. Maybe. <clears throat> Just for future reference, Patty. if you're not able to make it to one of my dinners, don't call me. Don't come by my house. Leave a gift. That's what real women do. It's the boss. Diana Ross. Shocking. Diana, I'm trying to figure out what invisible invitation came in the mail for you to be here. That's Actually, <laughs> I have a similar problem. I was trying to figure out if that was hair on your head or snuffle up, I guess. Okay, pause. She was talking about Shaka Khan. So that was Diana Ross talking about Shaka Khan here. <laughs> that so that's episode head? one, y'all. And as it went on, it progressively got better. Like, it's like two seasons of this shit. Do you hear me? Can you find the one? I'm sorry. Y'all gonna hang in there with us. I'm trying to find the one where the Fantasia was at. Uh, or should we do the Mary J. Blige and they said she was flat? Naomi, it's so many episodes. Okay, we ain't gonna we're gonna find this y'all. We're at least gonna spend fifteen minutes doing our favorite. So y'all do your homework this weekend. Go look up Got to Be Real and watch them all on YouTube. Patty LaHell, get your life. It's going to be a moment where you literally it was me, I don't wanna say your name. Um C G. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? Yeah. C G, me, you and Nia literally will be in tears in our cubicles. Do you know what I'm talking yes. about? Like during the summer, that's all we did was watch them. Actually, I think I'm gonna find our favorite part and I'm gonna send it to all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any, oh, I'm sorry, MJB. At some, I mean, she's a legend. I don't know what else to say. I'm just she still got it. I, I love her rawness. I love her blonde hair. I love her bop. I just realized she was just doing with the basketball. I didn't realize that was the move. Mm-hmm. I love her sable to the ground. I what well, is Mary? I'm just Mary. I'm just Mary. I'm just Why Mary. Why did they have that pre-recorded thing of Diddy and Diddy was like next to her? I mean, I think her and Diddy go way back. But the thing is, why why was it pre-recorded? Why, why did he just bring his up? There? Well, everybody don't got what they got. Everyone know there's limits. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. <laughs> next. Everybody know their limits. Thank you. <laughs> next. Because y'all would have talked about him. He came up there and stumbling around. So he said, what? Let me practice in my backyard. He got his sons recording him. Hit not, it again. Not King Combs. King Combs. I like his son. I'm just too old to listen to his music. That's all. Um, I'm sorry. Back to Mary. Mary did it. When Mary did, I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. That is an anthem. I remember being young, seeing that song. Meanwhile, I'm eight. <laughs> going down for what? 
Why are you sad, ma'am? Why are you sad at eight? Why are you going Singing down? Singing it heartfelt. I uh, I interviewed for the Glee Club and I sung that. Random fact. Maybe I'm using it as my new fact. Fun fact: When I applied for the Glee Club, my song of choice was "I'm Going Down" by Mary J. Blige. Meanwhile, I couldn't sing, <laughs> and I still got in <laughs> at eight. What was you think the um, Glee Club director went home and like this bitch came on the stage just some Mary J. <laughs> And you probably thought you was going, you was going in. <laughs> I'm going down. I think they just got me there. Like, oh, this one gonna perform. Cause you We're growing up here. Cause you We're ain't around. around. Ooh, Ooh baby. baby. And the thing is, I didn't sing the chorus. Like I sang the verse. Ooh, baby. <laughs> like sleep don't come easy. Look what you done to me? <laughs> I can't stop these tears from falling from my eyes. Like I did that part. I mean, what do you think the inside the director was doing? Why did my fuck? mom allow me to do this? Exactly. <laughs> you think she think you knowing my mom how you know her? You think she thought I wasn't gonna get in? Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of things that your mama just wished you didn't get. She was like, "Go ahead, honey." My mom just <laughs> let me walk into the fire of failure. <laughs> and then that was another way. I was like, "I made it." My mom said, "Into what?" I said, "The Glee Club." I remember when y'all niggas had that softball and your mom was like, y'all niggas won again. <laughs> <laughs> My mom wouldn't even get out the car. She was just sitting in the car and be like, did y'all, I'll come back. She'd be like, y'all lost. I said, no, we won. <laughs> what? Said, oh. Or no, it'd be like, oh, the coach gonna take us to get ice cream can you drive me? My mom was like, it's okay if y'all lost. I said, we won. <laughs> My mom's like, that means you gotta come back? <laughs> <laughs> other thing another place of constructive criticism little kim looked here what the fuck is going on with little kim everybody all the reviews i heard they said little kim looked nice and i was like what that's a fucking what lie. bt wars y'all saw little kim looks y'all send us an email that black love matters at gmail.com and let me know what y'all think of little kim i wasn't even impressed with little kim only had a 30 second thing and she was out of breath was she out of breath or did the mic go off i think she's out of breath since you have 45 seconds. Lil' Kim looks like an Asian woman to me now. What the fuck done happened? The thing is, Lil' Kim was... You know what? No, I'm on a walk with the Lord. If she, if that is what she believes serves her, mm-hmm. fine. But Kim, she one of my faves that... Can we talk about who... Speaking of aging well, can we talk about Method Man? All right. Hey. I don't know, not a word he said. It's morning rain. Oh, that's Mary still. Just gonna look at you. You are my destiny. What did he say? Oh, okay. But he looked good. I think he was in the bay, and I think he took the mega bus down. <laughs> These niggas did not take the mega bus down. <laughs> to get on there. Damn, my dad missed the Wu Tang. The Wu, yep. But anyway, I thought she did good. Y'all know I'm playing. We're talking about flat. When I I want to clarify so y'all won't come for me. When I mean flat, Mary's just very raw. Right? Her voice is, you know, some people, she's just raw. That's all mm. I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it like that. All right. Shout out Friday. Let's shout out Friday. All right. Let's get into it. So as always, be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or on Stitcher or shoot us an email or a voicemail and we'll shout y'all out. So this week, we ain't getting no reviews. So you already know how mm-hmm. I feel. Y'all near on birthday next week. The leak, the week leading up to my birthday ain't no reviews. He's a cancer. It is cancer season. Cancer are in there. Cancer season have really good seasons or really bad seasons. Is this how you y'all see, niggas We feel? already had to take a mental health day last week. Nyambi don't often ask for reviews, but if you can send a review, I appreciate it. So that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> the week not, leading Nyambi up to my birthday ain't none, not 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 Cat one of y'all dog. niggas. Could y'all send him some happy birthday wishes? He gonna say he don't want them, but he do. He really like the Stevie Wonder version. Don't y'all send us no R. Kelly happy birthday songs because we're not playing it. <laughs> but we would take um some Stevie Wonder. Damn, damn before R. Kelly got canceled, that song was a bop. That was a bop. It's but it's I, it's, this, 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 nope, nope. <laughs> Only Stevie Wonder for the traditional one. So y'all, we don't ask for much. Not even the two chains version. Nope. Uh, oh, you can do two chains. Well, Yeezy, he's still on watch too. He's healing. Oh fuck. Yeezy's healing. He's not canceled. He's just healing. He's just healing. Um, but we would appreciate some birthday wishes. Um, and just well, and it, like what Niram say, when you're just sitting in quiet thought and meditation and prayer, just send a thought to Niram in more so a prayer to Nyambi to get through the week. 
not only is it Neon's birthday, but both our parents will be in town. <sighs> Just keep us lifted. And with all that said, ain't not a single. Let me. What's refresh. the emails? Let me Nero, refresh. We're, we're, ain't no refresh. We're not doing let this. Me, let me see. You my, see if one, it's one came. Is there one? one you, we like through. the pastor. Who want to get saved? Nope. All done. Does anybody want to be saved? There are no new reviews in this feed. We done put the chair in the front of the congregation. Who gonna come sit in the is chair? Is there one? Would you look at us? Choir, take us out. <laughs> I got my hand up. Come, look. Come on in. What's these emails? I got my hand up. Come on. Come on. Come on with it. All right, so we got a couple emails. The first one is from uh, uh, Crystal. And she was just saying, Nayambi, I found this link for you. I know you're talking about uh, being hot. So the subject was a cooling weighted blanket. Oh, it's a cooling one? Yeah, that weighted blanket. It feels, I don't got so used to it, honey. But around midnight, I break out in a sweat. (laughs) So I might have to look into that. Yeah. Yeah. So you got one. We got another one from um, Crystal, uh-huh. and the subject is uh, Black Boston Connections. Yeah, and it says, "Hey, hey, hey, y'all!" Hey. So I listened to the previous episode where uh, you had the listener who was moving from Baltimore, I believe, to Boston, mm-hmm. and heard places and groups that you named to get connected with uh, with Black Boston. Well, first off, let me just say yes to everything you suggested. Maybe except for Daryl's, which uh, has been hit or miss for me personally because of the management change over the years. But I love to connect uh, with Sis and offer her uh, some personal uh, personal recommendations. The thing about Boston is that the black people are 100% there. And once you make your way uh, to one event or uh, meet one key person, you're naturally an effortless glide, glide from one uh, black circle to the next and back but 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 depending on what brought you to the city navigating the transition can be challenging i uh, i do personally know uh sheena collier from the calling her connection and would love to make an introduction for other listeners so let me tell you sheena is bad right. she is shaking the table and making big moves in Boston. So, listener sis, we'll definitely want to keep up with her. Uh, I'm originally from Boston myself, mm-hmm. by the way, and very, uh, uh, by by the way, of a very strong, what did I say? Where we at? I don't know why my glasses. Did you well. lose your whole spot? Yeah, I surely Where did. I now? didn't skip the same. Um, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Basically from... Uh, Barbadian oh. from Barbados. I'm sorry. I, I never like, seen a Barbadian. <laughs> like that. I had to like say it out loud. Like, you know how you, you know how you said in your head. My Look. inside voice, my voice <laughs> in my head said it, but my nigga voice couldn't. Because I wanted to, I wanted to say Bahamian, right? But it was like, oh, this person's from Barbados, yeah. so Barbadian. Please forgive me. It's getting late, and I'm already afraid. <laughs> this is me. I don't know. I didn't even try. And, you know, Naomi is uh, hopped up on coffee. <laughs> Can you y'all are. tell I drank coffee today? Yes, I can tell. How? Because I actually ate a drink of dirty chai. It is getting late. To and the you point are... where I ordered, I was like, "Can I get a chai with a shot of espresso?" And it was like, "Ooh." <laughs> <laughs> From very strong bar- Barbadian family, um, so my Black and West Indian circles are real tight. Yeah. But we always have room for new family. What you know? That's another thing. I know we were so. Teasing. Come on down, sis. You know, I was te- I know it was cheesing the um, Nigerians and Africans. Y'all know we all family. But why the um, West Indy folks don't be in the movies? Because of all the European blacks. They take their they accent. Don't too. do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nirv is a liar. Nirv is trying to start a whole revolution. <laughs> you are a liar. You was on that Donald Trump pedagogy. What? Oh, pedagogy. What? Y'all, it's late. It pedagogy, is like, pedagogy. I don't pedagogy, know. Pedagogy. That, those two mean two different things. You on a Donald Trump fake news shit. You just making up shit as you go. <laughs> Do not take none shit near him and saying for fat. You like, talk about the black Europeans. It's what? I'm telling you. Listen, who said that? I'm sleeping. I'm Portia. Who said that? But no, do you notice there's a lot of like are there I don't know a lot of West Indie like black actors and stuff. Mm-mm. I mean, no, I guess that's a double negative. But like West Indie folks. That's true. Or like just West Indie type Rihanna. store. She got no actress. Oh. 
she, no, don't get me wrong. She got her. She's a business woman. Well, she acting that movie. I'm At, so. Okay. I mean, she Beyonce acted. also acted in Cadillac Records. Let's, hey. Let's. And Carmen, <laughs> a hip hopper. <laughs> let's not forget no, that. I'm talking about <laughs> act, acting, right? Actors, actresses, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm going to look into that. What's going on with that? Yeah, we need more representation. Okay. Anyway, she says. Yeah, I'm talking about Franklin took them. <laughs> Franklin. Franklin took and Idris Elba took all the roles from all the black men. Idris Elba, and I don't even know that I his name Idris too. Yeah. Took all the roles from black people. Is that yes, what you're telling me? Absolutely. Nero is a oh my god. Donald Trump is running off on you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Forty five. They, they can find a, a a black boy from Juilliard to, to play that. I'm just finish, saying. Finish who played uh, Dr. Dre and um, Columbus? Short- no, who played Dr. Dre and uh, what is NWA? His name here? See, that's the problem. You're so caught up in Franklin. Leave that Franklin's a baby. Leave that baby alone. I did just recently move to New York for a job opportunity with HBO, but I love to share my Boston resources with the HBO. Listeners. Hey, I, wait. We Wait, were, wh- Black Love what? Matters are open for opportunities hell, for a late night show. Even, hell, I'm just trying to go to a something. Like, you know they be having events? <laughs> hey. Now, you trying to go to an event? I'm trying to put us on for good, baby. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some shrimp. You over here trying to get some goddamn <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> I won't even be loud, sis. I won't embarrass you at all. <laughs> I won't even go up to people. Like, I'm not. I'm actually real low key when it comes to that. Like, if it's famous people or people that's more popular, I'm not one to necessarily go up to them. Mm-hmm. I actually met like one of the tech founders of like a big company out here, and I like, I played it off like I didn't know who he was, and I think he enjoyed it. Well, I seen Mark Zuckerberg at uh, at Whole Foods. And what, did you say anything? No, I because it was so damn like shocking. To see this nigga. nigga in Mark Zuckerberg Whole is Foods. not a fucking celebrity. He's just a rich white man. I seen a nigga in Whole Foods. Did he look like himself? Yeah. That's to be the thing. Y'all, y'all come out here and these niggas, you be like, actually, for so long, I thought Mike, Mark Zuckerberg looked like that guy who played him in the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how I knew it was him. No, they don't look alike, Nero. They kind of do. They- and, you know, people say, hey, Mark, how you doing? What he say? I'm doing Fuck fine. You. You, went th- you went hooping in the streets when the Congress was coming for me. <laughs> See, that's why I come be in the set. <laughs> Can I finish this email? Yeah, y'all. That is the biggest thing about Silicon Valley. Seeing all like these folks who created these things, like even like Elon Musk and shit walking around the street. I'm like, that's the nigga they was just talking about on CNN. I'm like, he going to the moon and leading us. And I almost <laughs> want to go to like, what the fuck is on the moon, my nigga? <laughs> so you just gonna leave us on the moon? Like, look, I'm like, this is a mirror. You just gonna leave me, leave us here, and go to the moon, my guy? <laughs> so my guy, you just gonna go to the fucking moon? What the fuck is niggas not allowed in the moon, my guy? <laughs> How much is the fucking tickets? And like these niggas be trying to live regular ass lives. Regular lives. So I'm, I'm just here to get my halos. Right. <laughs> Talking about. Is it a sale? No billionaires. No <laughs> fucking <goddamn> sale. sale. <laughs> Don't get me on Bezos, rich ass. <laughs> when you see him, the whole air change. You like, what's that smell? Oh, it's just a billion dollars. Can I finish this yeah, email? Yeah, it's a, we could do a whole episode to see these rich motherfuckers in their Patagonia. Meanwhile, I want a Cartier bracelet. <laughs> Can you finish the email, no. please? No, go ahead. Uh, she talked about how she just moved uh, to New York for opportunity at HBO. We're trying to get a late night show. Mm. You know, we're trying to do it on, but, you know, we can do HBO. Yeah. That'll work. I think we mow decent and Miro. <laughs> the male, female version of that shit. Um, but I would love to share my uh, Boston resources with listener uh, with the listener as well as anyone else in the Black Love family who needs help navigating white ass Boston. I added the white ass. Um, you can't be a resource, you know, uh, if you you can't be a resource if no one knows uh, what you have to offer, and no one will know uh, what you have to offer if you act like a gatekeeper uh, to information. Mm-hmm. So you have to offer. So I'm offering myself as a resource mm. to all the Black Love Matters family mm-hmm. uh, to help folks, uh, to help make all connections they need. Mm-hmm. And, if I, uh, and if I don't got it, I'll point to the right, uh, right direction. Give her her social media. Don't give her the email. I ain't going to give her email. Well, if y'all really want to send us a side email, we'll send yeah. you her email. But we'll give you her social media handle. And she said you can slide in her demos. Don't be on no nasty shit. Right. Looking at you, sir, Jeff. No, just- <laughs> <laughs> and so her handle was at the crystal lens. So 
So T H E C R Y S T A L L E N S. So the crystal lens. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead and look her up anywhere on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and just shoot her a message. Yeah, and if you want that plug, let us know, uh, and we'll forward you her information. Thank you, Crystal. We appreciate that. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and she said, "P.S. I owe y'all an email on how great uh, my great aunt and uncle is uh, one of the longest married couples in Boston." Mm-hmm. And they were honored at a ceremony in the city. So stay Shut tuned. For up. Yes, please, please do. I love that. And she said, PPS, roof, roof, Mabel. Mabel hanging in there, honey. Blessed and highly favored. Ain't you, though? You brought me through. Here you can read that one. This next one is a question. It says, Hey, Nyambi and Niram, I just found your podcast and ran across an episode where Nyambi mentioned um, an anthropology horror crossover. I think I said anthropology. Oh, shit. Anthro- Thank you, Nero. Anthropology crossover. I'm trying to um, advance in my career. I hold a BS in anthropology and was hoping you could give me some advice to enter in the HR field. Thank you, um, your listener. Um, I, I, especially in the tech field, there is a lot of... Um, let me get my thoughts together. And I might come back to money and flesh this out more thoroughly. Mm -hmm. But there is a field in HR where there is a team of people who study the culture of the team. Right. Like a lot of times they're under like qualitative analysis. Right. Um, Qualitative researchers, that type of area. Let me do a little more digging so I can get the exact terminology and the name from you. So you can just do a Google search for companies. Right. To Mm -hmm. see you do that. Right. And the thing is, tech might be a little ahead of a curve, but whatever we doing, folks going to start doing the next year, two years later. I probably would recommend since you have a BS in anthropology that you might want to at least get a master's. Right. At least another that another layer of credential um, just to take you to another level of that research. Right. So I'm assuming a BS in anthropology gives you kind of a wide sweeping understanding of anthropology where a master's might let you allow you to go a little bit deeper mm-hmm. into a certain segment of it. Right. And you might want to talk about like how organizations or like tech company, like, you know what I'm saying? How company, like you can do a little deeper on that, mm-hmm. but there is. Um, you could even begin Googling it. It's like I said, especially in tech companies where uh, there's a part of HR, right? Where it's almost replacing that thing where, you know, the folks who usually do like trainings and develop, like it's within that area, but they, people t- particularly tailor the trainings now based on the culture of their company, right? So they use the anthropologist to help hone in on specific culture, like spikes or things that are going really well or areas that they want to improve on, right? But to do that and to unpack that type of stuff, they need anthropologists and sociologists who study this type of work. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot of companies are doing it. Um, tech is a lot of think tanks, a lot of venture capitalist companies. Like th- those companies are a little bit more progressive are doing it. But again, if folks doing it, everybody else gonna fall in the suit eventually, right? That's just like learning to development officers. Tech companies kind of starting and not everybody's doing it. Mm-hmm. Chief diverse, like saying all that shit, right? But that's what it, it really comes into. And even if you just Google that, right? Like um, culture, like, and it's different from IO too, right? Because I know there's like IO, like, like it's more how like organizations develop, right? Mm-hmm. And stuff like that, how you navigate with that. But when the anthropology is specific look at like cultural rituals, tradition, like, it's just more, it's more culturally based, right? When I think of IO, it definitely feels more white man lens, um, sterile, where I think anthropology gets to the unspoken. Does that make sense? It's a, lot, it's a lot more focused on qualitative than the quant that I think IO psych or just the lens in which IO, like I think of IO psych as interventions, mm-hmm. right? How do you intervene or make things a certain way where anthropology is like, how do we just explain what is? That's the difference I kind of see. But yeah, it's out there. Did that make sense? Did that make sense, y'all? Yeah, we tired. Yeah, it's late here. Anyways, we got some couple voicemails. We'll we come back to left you. Doesn't got in her damn bed. She surely did. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the first one. You hit it, Yeah. Okay. Hi, I just wanted to share with you guys like a different perspective on black love. Um, I'm divorced. I was in a relationship for 11 years and married for eight years. Um, But at this time, I'm divorced, and I think that's a part that we don't really talk about too much. Um, You know, if you do it in a timely manner, it doesn't necessarily have to mean the end of your love for that person or even the end of relationship with that person, just not in you know, a romantic way, mm-hmm. um, especially with 
having kids involved. You know, a lot of times people stay in a bad situation, but we have to forget that we also need to love ourselves. And so sometimes it's just better to let that person go so you can get where you need to be. Okay. That's a word. Everything you say, a thousand agree. I agree. Plus one. Yep. Next email. I mean, not email. Voicemail. Oh. <laughs> Neil may screen it. <laughs> How many times I have to tell you this? What, baby? I think it's tired. Mm-hmm. We got some more though. Hey, Niram and Nyambi. Hey. It's Itasha. Hey, Itasha. Um, I've been listening for probably over a year. I oh, actually goodness. recommended um, you all to my cousin who has called in and left so many voice messages to Nigel. Oh, um, but this is actually Nigel. my first voice message. Niram, yes, I gave y'all five stars like before you had to even ask me, bro. So we're good on that one. Now you send me one this um, week, I'm calling because <laughs> I'm, I'm catching up. So I was listening to the um, toxic positivity. And I was talking to this guy that I met on this little single Facebook group or whatever. Wrong and choice. he, oh, y'all, he's a narcissist. Okay, I'm coming to that conclusion. <laughs> on yesterday brother always talking about i i i i'm funny i don't never be sad i'm always happy um everybody likes me and blah because everybody likes me you're gonna like me and i'm like you know give me the opportunity to say for myself whether or not i'm gonna like you or not because i'm not gonna base anything off of someone else's opinion especially if you're telling me what somebody else is saying they're not even giving me this information. So we had this date, and he just talks about himself and whatever. So I just was kind of confused as if to why a grown individual would sit and say, I'm always happy living in the world that we live in as a black man with black children with black issues in, quote, unquote, colonize the world. So... <laughs> He just kept on saying, like, you know, I'm happy. I don't let them forget to me. I don't allow my children to say that they're mad and that they're upset. What? And so I had to bring him back a little bit because I'm like, that to me doesn't sound realistic yeah. because of the fact that me being a young boy. No, you're right. Like, that's, I don't want to say the word. I'm trying to be more aware of the words I say. I'm trying not to say crazy because crazy mm-hmm. is a real thing. That's ridiculous. Not to allow, right? I mean, you can back. you can maybe say that, right? If it's something that doesn't call need the reaction, right? Mm-hmm. But people can have emotions. Yeah. Okay, it's Tasha again. I, I guess I need to talk a little bit faster. Um, I'm not even sure if y'all got my first uh, got first voicemail, but it's about the toxic positivity. And so basically, I'm explaining to this guy, you know, like being a young um, a young teenage black girl going through some things that I've never experienced before. You know, I got from people, you know, being 13, 14 years old, they're like, oh, my gosh, Tasha, like, you're so strong and blah, 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 blah. So I just assumed that I had to be strong. I had to cry to myself. I couldn't let those, you know, emotions be expressed. And not that people were telling me that I that I couldn't do that. It's just that if somebody is always telling me I'm so strong, then that's the only thing that I feel like I needed to be even when I wasn't wanting to be strong. When I got into bad relationships as an adult, I'm just thinking that, oh, girl, you just got to be strong. And that's not necessarily the truth because that's where depression and all of that anxiety and stuff plays in. If you're not equally matching those emotions, I'm not saying you have to be irate and go crazy and bust windows or whatever, but I'm saying that you have to help, if it's a healthy way of letting those emotions play out, and then you get your ass up and you keep moving and you go on and you face the next thing because... I'm trying to explain to him is that you're teaching your children to harbor these feelings. And I was talking to my cousin Sinandra. I'm like, you know, what if somebody does something to his daughter? And she's thinking, that, well, my dad tells me, well, I can't be mad. I can't be upset. I can't be angry. And she never voices her opinion or let anybody know that something is happening to her, you know. So I just didn't agree with him saying that I'm always happy. So I had to give him his own example. They were stranded in the, in the airport this past weekend because of, weather and then they had buddy passes so they kept getting bumped for flights him and his three children from seattle to come back to houston Mm -hmm. 
And he texted me and was just like, I literally want to cry. Now, this was on Saturday, but not a day the nigga got, like, real bad. Oh, she called back. Yeah, she called back. Oh, no, she was getting good. Was, was Man, Skype be cutting off at the wrong time. It's okay, it's like, Tasha again. It's my last message. But yeah, basically, yeah. you know, I I don't see myself clicking with a person like that because if if I'm going to tell you that, you know, I'm upset that I have to drive an hour and 15 minutes commute in traffic to get to work every day, and it's annoying to me. It's not. It's not anything negative about that. It's annoying to drive a commute. Yes, I did take you know this position or whatever have you, so I knew what it entails. But that doesn't still mean that I don't feel away. So you're going to tell me, oh, just be happy. Like, yeah, I'm very grateful and blessed that I even have a job to go to that's paying me good-ass money. But this traffic in Houston fucking sucks. Like, I mean, damn, we've been working on freeways since I've been born in 84. So I'm just saying, like, it's still, you know, you should still allow people to go through that. Well, he normally sends me a text message every morning, but since we had that little issue, he didn't send one today. So I sent him one. I was like, oh, you need to look up toxic positivity and have you a great weekend. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that was a pity side. But no, I mean, it's true. And I wanted to say that that topic, like, literally, I listened to it yesterday, Nyambi, and talked to Tanadra about it. And she was like, bitch, that's toxic positivity. I was like, girl, you are absolutely right. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all. love y'all. And why y'all got this British lady on the voicemail? But anyways, I will be calling back in soon because y'all are really my therapy. Y'all have a great day. Hey, Mabel girl, love you. Uh, we got a British woman don't answer the phone. I don't know we who answered the phone. Answer. Maybe she black. I don't know who the fuck answered the phone black. on Skype. Bruff. Bruff. Oh no, that's not British. That's, that's, that's my, my, my people. Well, that's it. I need to get my test done. Yeah, you do. Because I, it's about three populations I'm narrowing it down to. Bruff. Close. Well, to submit your Black Love Stories, go to blacklovematters.com. To submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters.com. And to, to leave us an email about anything that we talked about, you can do that on our website, SoundCloud, or Stitcher, or any form of social media, Black Love Matters. Remember, that's Black Love with no K. Um, and don't forget about that voicemail at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever, ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Rough. Rough.